in to put in. That was the kickoff point for the oil that came over here to uh, on the over here by Laterno, and that was the first booster station. From where in Longview did it run? I mean, like, am I sitting on it? <laughs> no. Sitting on the pipeline? Yeah. No. Now, I will tell you this: the pipeline is still being used today. And any of you know that? Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> still being used today. And also the 20 inch, the little inch is still being used. In 1947, the U.S. government decided to sell it. Get out of it. Get away from it. They didn't need it anymore. The war was over. So they, Herman Brown, any of you know who Herman Brown was? George Brown? How many of you know what Brown and Root? Have you ever heard of Brown and Root? You ought to from here in Longview. <laughs> Spent a lot of time out there at Eastman. Well, Brown and Root, George and Herman Brown started Brown and Root Construction, one of the largest construction companies in the world. Well, Herman Brown got some investors together and they bid on that line and they started the company, Texas Eastern Transmission. You ever heard of that? And they bought the line. In 1949, they won the bid. In 1949, they put it, transferred it to gas, natural gas. And it is, if you go to Texarkana today, and you get on I-30 going towards Little Rock, you'll cross the Red River, there's a trestle over on your right side. That's the big inch crossing the Red River. Now, what we understand and what we've been told is that Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Manhattan, New York is being heated by 100% East Texas natural gas today. So they're both, now we thought for a long time that the 20 inch was abandoned and no longer in use, but it is still being used also the same way. So do we know where they are in Longview? Well, they're out here, you know where uh, Laterno is? It goes around and it starts back north from there. So it's out of the city, comes out of the city limits. There's a historical marker on Martin Luther King. Now, I believe that historical marker tells you that that was the kickoff point. But they had some tanks there and they weren't big enough. They were supply tanks for the booster station. That was the, boost, the first booster station. There was actually 28 booster stations built along the way. They took the 15,000 men and they split them in four groups and uh, started building the booster stations, different companies, and a lot of companies came to be during this time as uh, building the booster stations and uh, laying the lines. And, I mean, it was concrete poured, and uh, but the from each booster station, the pressure coming into those booster stations is about 30 pounds. And uh, from leaving the booster station, it goes to 750. So it loses that much pressure from each booster station because when it comes in, it's at about 30 pounds. When it leaves, it's 750 pounds. And it boosts it up to the next station. Any other questions? It's uh, you know, you're going up elevation, going up toward the northeast, and so that certainly takes a lot of pressure off. Yes. Did they have to build some type of different impeller. Did they make different impellers to go down and teach the booster station? Well, they were all basically the same. Uh, Alice Chandler built most of the pumps, and also Ingersoll ran, and they were centrifugal pumps. And they probably did have different impellers for different. But most of them always had it, two pumps at each station, at least two. Most of them had four, I think. Any other question? Ricky, why is it called the big inch and not the 24 inch or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, the story is 
Now welders became came in their own at this time too. Uh, and the story was that a welder got through welding the big the, the pipeline and he said, I just got through welding a big inch. Mm -hmm. Now I can understand that because I was an old pipeline welder, so I can understand what he was talking about. But uh, and a lot of people say, well, it was the biggest pipe circumference wise and they call it the big inch because there's nothing ever ever been built that big. But I like to go with the, the first one. Somebody else have a question? Well, how big are the pipelines now? Oh, they go up to 36, 42 inch. Is that the, like the transit, the Alaskan pipeline? That was really. Yeah, I, I, that one was what, 36, I believe? 30 or 36. You know, most, most of you would probably be shocked at the pipelines that cross this place big pipeline and there's a lot of 30 and 36 inch pipelines that are right here pretty close and this lady back here saying am I, am I sitting on it you might be sitting on one <laughs> any other questions yes sir I've heard a lot of presentations on the video this past year um, what is the the land surveyors? Well, what they did is they flew over. They aerial surveyed this. They flew over and, and plotted out a route, favorable route for this pipeline by flying over. And that's how they did Now, they did go back and they did survey. As they went along, they, they surveyed. But in the very beginning, they just flew over and they plotted out a, a route for the pipeline to go. And well, they. The question is the man that did the on the ground surveying was a long time resident of Long Beach, Texas. And that never seemed to be mentioned. I can't hear what he's saying. He said the man that surveyed it on the ground was a long time resident of Longview and he's never been mentioned. I'm sure there's a lot of them that never was mentioned. Yeah, roughly thirteen months. Yeah. Yes. Did you say the person's name? Perry Thompson. Perry Thompson. Any other questions? Today, at least three foot. About three, three foot. The bigger lines are very deep now. Uh, the big lines probably four to five foot deep. Did um, when Brown and Root bought the the big pipeline? Did uh, they get easements then, or is there still not any easements? No, it's. Well, I think they did go back later and, and get these afterwards, but it was already there, so. <laughs> you couldn't do that. Yeah. But people didn't, people didn't, they were, they were wanting to help. Yeah, you know? yeah, people would agree. Patriotism was very, very high then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am.